Holy to the book of Psalm number 68. Amen. Amen. What I said? 68 number Psalm. Amen. Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse number 1. Let us stand. You'll find these words. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Amen? Numbers 10 and 35. Numbers 10 and 35. Numbers 10 and 35. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses rise up. Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. You may be seated. Now that second text of Numbers 10 and 35 is identical to Psalm 68 and 1. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. This psalm, psalm of a psalm, was sung when the ark of the covenant that had been taken by the enemy, when the ark of the covenant was brought back, Moses sung this song. Let God arise. Y'all go ahead and wake up now. Yeah. 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 Let his enemies be scattered. Yeah. Yes. So when that ark was coming back home, Jesus. somebody lifted up their voice in a song and said, Let God arise. God arise. And his enemy be scattered. Amen. For you look at the one next to you and say, Neighbor. Neighbor. Let God, Let God arise, arise in you. In you. Say it louder, neighbor. Let God arise in you. Is that all right? Let God, brother Deacon, arise up in you. Say amen. Amen. Let God arise in you. In other words, somebody been letting God sleep. All right. Amen. <laughs> somebody been letting God get up. Wake him up. God want to rise in you. Yes. Sir. Talk to me, somebody. All right. And the word arise means to come to light. Yes. The word arise means to make an appearance. Okay. The word arise means to turn up. You know, young folks say, young folks they say, Mama, turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> the word arise means to surface, spring up. Begin, come to pass, set in, set up, rise up. So when I say let God arise in you, I'm saying bring God on the scene. Let God make an appearance in your life. When people look at you, talk to me, y'all, y'all. Come on, y'all writing and stuff, y'all. When people see you, they ought to see God in you. Wherever you go, in the grocery store, in the gas line, or, uh, in the corner store, wherever you are, yes. people ought to see the God in you. Yes. And that's one of the greatest forms of flattery is, is to hear somebody say, I see God in you. Yes. And you ain't carrying no Bible, you ain't speaking in your tongue, Thank you ain't got no backward collar. Y'all ain't talking to me. You just living your life. 
life and people will observe you and say, I see God in you. Yes. And a lot of times they don't want to say God, they say something about you. Something about, something about him, something about her. I just can't yeah. put my finger on it because they don't know it's God. Jesus. They tell other people there's something about that girl. Yes. Yes. Something about that man that he's not like an no ordinary man. Yes. She doesn't look like an ordinary woman, but there's something I can't put my finger on it. But when people can say that I can look at you outside of the four walls of the church and I can see God in you. That's the highest form of flattery you can get. Yes. Come on, that's just like you won the lottery. Come on, y'all. That's, that's just like you became a millionaire to have somebody say that about you. Say it. Instead of somebody saying, I see the devil in you. Uh -oh. Every time you come around, the devil come around. Every time you come around, folk raise hell. I don't want him to say it about me. But I want him to say every time I see him, he's got a smile on his face. He's talking good. He's talking positive. He's quoting scriptures. He's encouraging people. He's uplifting people. I want a mother to see it to see the God in me. And in order for them to see the God in me, I got to let God arise in me. Yes. I got to let God show up in me. Come on, say yes. amen. amen. I got to let God surface in me. I got to let God stand up in me. I got to let God spring up in me. Jesus. My God, brother deacon, I got to let him see God in my life. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. When you dead and gone, to have somebody speak over you when you go, and they stand up and tell the congregation that they saw God in you and you dead and go, that's a blessing. Amen. Yes, amen. Not too many people seeing negative stuff in Christians. Come on. Amen. Negative stuff in preachers. Something happened here in the city the other week. The call don't make the bad no blame. Preacher messed up, and it didn't just look bad for him. It looked bad for all preachers. That's it. But when one preacher messed up, they're going to throw us all in the same box. That's it. But hold up. Don't throw me in there with him. That was him they called. That wasn't me. All right. But just because he represents a preacher, then all preachers ain't no good. They call them pulpit pimps. Call the church to get that preacher your money, huh? That's what the world think about preachers. Years ago, stands in the world respected preachers. Yes. To say I'm a preacher was a noble profession. Amen. But now to say it is almost like a curse. Uh -huh. Oh, you one of them, huh? Yeah. Because somebody is saying that have lost faith in preachers. Yes. Come on, say amen. amen. But just because you lost faith in one, don't mean you lost faith in all of them. Amen. All of them ain't laying up with the women and eating chicken and stealing the money. I done told y'all all the preachers ain't driving no Cadillac. All right. I drive all to my Nissan. Yeah. Come on, say amen, y'all. Tell somebody let God arrive in you. And it ought to be the desire of every child of God to let God rise up in them. So people can see what true love look like. People can see stands of what true compassion look like. People can see what true joy look like. People can see what true peace look like. When you look at a child of God, you ought to glean something from them. When you look at a child of God, you ought to, you ought to get excited. You ought to glean something positive. Yes, yes. Not nothing negative. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. Let God arise in you. Ooh, Jesus. Tell somebody, let God arise in you. Let God arise. Let God break forth in you. Let God be seen in your life, in your yes. character, in the way you walk, and in the way you talk. Let people see God in you. I don't mean walk around acting holy all day long. You don't supposed to act holy. No, how you ought to be holy. All right. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, I don't want you to be so heavenly minded that you ain't no earthly good. Amen. You know the type of people they so heavenly minded ain't no earthly good. They ain't even get up speaking in tongues. They lay down speaking in tongues. Can't have a conversation but speaking in tongues. All right. Lord, have mercy. You too holy now. <laughs> I know we're in the world, but we're not of the world. All right. But you don't get so heavenly minded that you ain't no earthly good. Come right. down out the clouds sometimes. Yes. Come down off the mountain sometimes. Yes. Ain't nothing wrong with laughing sometimes. Right. I believe Jesus had a sense of humor. All right. I know God did. Look at the way he made some of us. That's it. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. Amen. Amen. But I believe, <laughs> oh. I believe God got a sense of humor. I believe Jesus laughed when he lived here on earth. Because he was a man. He felt like all men feel. Yeah. He knew what it was to be up. He knew what it was to be down. He knew what it was, what it was to be happy. He knew what it was to be sad. Yes. The Bible said, but we have not a priest that cannot be touched with feeling that we were 
tempted with, but what the Lord points tempted like as we are, but yet without sin. In other words, that's saying what we're going through, Jesus went through. Yes. Amen. Tell somebody, let God arise in you. But every time you saw Jesus, you saw God. Because yes. Jesus was always letting God rise up in him. Amen. Uh, every time Jesus opened his mouth, he talked about God. He said, I didn't come to do my will. Come on, y'all. He said, but I came to do the will of him that sent me. Yes. In other words, Brother Deacon, he was always preaching about the Father. He never talked of himself. He always said, my Father has sent me. Yes. In my Father's house of many mansions. When you've seen me, you've seen the what? The Father. He was letting God rise up in him. Yes. Can I get a witness? Amen. Tell to let God arise in you. Let God arise. Why should I let God arise in me, Pastor? Number one, you should let God arise in you that your enemies may be scattered. Yes. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 8 and 7, the Lord shall call thine enemies that rise up against thee uh, to be smitten before thy face. He said, thy enemy shall come uh, 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 out against you one way, but they will flee seven ways. Why should I let the Lord rise up in me so my enemies can be scattered? Proverbs 16, 7, when a man ways pleases him, he maketh even his enemy be at peace with him. You want God to take care of your enemies? Let him rise up in you. Come on, y'all give me your attention, please. Let him rise up in you. You got enemies on the left and enemies on the right. And every time you turn around, you got enemies. Don't worry about them enemies. Just let God rise up in you. Yes. God said, when I rise up in you, I'll scatter your enemies. Yes. They come in on you one way, but I make them run seven ways. Yes. No, they ain't talking to me. In other words, your enemy may come upon you and be together, but when I get through with them, I'll split them up. Jesus. Amen. Let God arise. That his enemies may be what? Scattered. I don't know about y'all, but I got some enemies. Amen. I guess I'm the only one. I got some enemies standing that I can see. Uh -huh. I got some enemies I can't see. I got some enemies I know by name, but I got some enemies I don't know by name. That's it. Come on, say amen, y'all. Enemies are all around you, ain't it? Enemies are everywhere. On your job. You can have enemies in your family. Yes. Your own blood, you have enemies. But God said, if you don't let me arise in you, I'll take care of them boogers. I'll take care of them enemies. God uh, tells them how he take care of my enemies when they try to get tough. And that's enough. When them enemies try to get tough, but God will take care of them. God said, let me handle them. All you got to do is keep letting me rise in you. All you got to do is keep letting me rise up in you. All you got to do is just keep letting folks see God in you. And I'll take care of your enemies to the extent that you can sleep at night. Some folk right now can't sleep at night because they worry about their enemies. Can't sleep at night because the their enemies plotting against them. But I don't care how you plot, my God, days if you dig one ditch. Because the trap you set may just be for you. And while you plotting against me, you're going to fall into your own trap. How I many of y'all know God will reverse the curse? Yes, they curse that they put on you. God will turn it in. I wish I had. God will turn it around. That ditch that meant for you to fall in, you, you'll be looking down on them in the ditch. Because God got your back. Tell somebody, God got your back. Look them out in the eyes and say, God got your back. God, God, God is watching out for your people. I say, he's watching out for you. All you got to do is let God what? Let him arise up in you. And your enemies will be what? They will be scattered. Let God arise up in you to show forth his glory. Come on, say amen. amen. For that end of that prayer, so for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Romans eleven thirty six says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Forever. Let him be the glory in your life. Amen. Forever. Uh, the Bible speaks of three glory kingdoms. The celestial glory. The trans, 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 transcendental glory and the celestial glory. Let God arise in you that you can show forth his glory. In other words, every time I go and wherever I be, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see the glory of God in me. Yes. Hallelujah. How I many know God won't share his glory, but he'll let you bask under the glory. Amen. Y'all get that. Uh -huh. He won't share his glory, but he'll let you live under the glory. Yes. And everywhere you go, people will see the glory on you. Come on, talk to me, church. They'll see the glory on you. I see the glory on that woman. I see the glory on that man. 
Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a brightness. Uh, who else seen the glory? It's like a brightness. And you can see, it's like a cleanness. Some folks just look dingy. All right. uh, saints today, these Christians today look dingy. But it's something about the glory. It's something about the glory. I don't know about washing white clothes. Come on in. Uh, you put that bleach in there, don't you? To make them whites be white. What you use? Hot or cold water? Hot water. Somebody said cold. Hallelujah. Get you some tide. <laughs> All right. I ain't got no help in here. Get you some tide and put in that water. Yeah. And while you wash them stains away, yeah. put some shout it out. Y'all remember shout it out? Come on, don't lie to me. If you had a bad stain, a blood stain, a blueberry stain, you put that shout it out on there. It's out. <laughs> and then them white clothes look so white. Yes. They look so pure and look so clean. That's the way you look when the glory is on you. Amen. I'm gonna let God arise in me because I want the I want the people to see His glory. Yes. Notice what I said. I didn't want the people to see me. I want them to see the glory. Hallelujah. When I'm standing up here trying to preach to y'all on Sunday and then be, people be watching my YouTube, I don't want them to look at me. I want them to see the glory of God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. They don't ever remember my name or the name of the church. Remember Jesus. Yes. Amen. Remember the glory of God. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not here to promote my island. I'm not here to promote Red Mitchell. I'm here to promote Jesus. Jesus. Because my island and Red Mitchell ain't got no heaven to hell to put nobody in. Yes. But if we put Jesus in front of everybody, well, y'all sleep in me, huh? Y'all sleep on me this morning. Tell somebody, let God arise. Let God arise. That people can see his glory. That your enemies can be scattered. Uh, and then last but not least, let God, let God arise to show forth his power. His power. Romans 8, 28, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Ain't it right now? God got up when Jesus got up, he didn't have some power. He, had all power. he didn't have political power. power. He didn't have black power. power. He didn't have kinetic power. power. He didn't have potential power. power. Raise some hands and say, oh, power. All power. I got to let God arise in me, Mother Satan, so they can see and show forth the power of God. Yes, when you're looking at me, you're looking at God's power. Yes. Come on, wake up, y'all. Come on. Yes. When you're looking at me, you're looking at God's power. So in order for you to see the power of God, I got to let God arise. Yes. I got, I, listen, I can't be somewhere hiding. That's it. I can't be somewhere ducking. Okay. I got to come to the forefront. That's it. So they won't see me. But they see God. But they'll see God. Amen. They'll see the glory of God, right? Jesus. They'll see the power of God, right? Yes. And my enemies will be what? Scattered. Scattered. But I got, I got to let God arise. Let them arise in your testimony. Yes. Let them arise in your praise. Yes. Let them arise in your prayer life. Yes. Let them arise in your conversation. Yes. Let them arise in your witness. Yes. Let them arise in your living. Yes. Let them arise in your service. Yes. Let them arise in your song. Yes. Let them arise in your home. Yes. Let them arise on the job. Yes. Let them arise in your body, mind, and soul. Yes. Let them arise in your giving. Yes. Let them arise in dedication. Yes. Let them arise in consecration. Yes. Let him arise in your victory. Let him arise in your walls. Yes. Let God arise. And his enemies will be scattered. You don't have to worry about the enemy if you just do your job. That's it. And the word arise means to show up, right? That's it. The word arise means to turn up. Uh huh. Turn up God. Turn him up. In your life. Ha! Little old young folks said, turn it up, mama, turn it up. Come on, they said now, Mama, turning it up. Turn up in God. Turn up in God. They ain't talking about no turnips and rutabagas either. Ha. Am I right, my Satan? Turn up in God. Somebody say, let God arise in you. Let God arise. In other words, let people see God in you. Yes. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let them see the Pauline. Don't let them see Karen. Don't let them see Daisy. But let them see God in you. Yes. Say, I see God in that man. Yes. I see God in that woman. Come on, brother Amen. Because the world needs an example. Yes. The world needs something to see. Amen. Don't care about how we talk about God. They want to see if we're living what we talk That's about. That's right. Am I teaching right? It's time for no, wait, am I right? Yeah. Folk, when you want, listen, 
okay watching you when you're in between these homes. Show and tell. That's what it is. Okay, watching you when you go out there. That's right. When you on Victory Drive. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you on Abercorn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you on whatever street in Savannah. Uh -huh. People watching you. Yeah. And whether if you're a leader and you got a lead, you leading in the church, yeah. you're going to be the first one they watch. And they ain't, and look, they ain't got no reservation, and they ain't scared to tell you when you're walking out of place. Amen. Amen. They're taking a minute. Amen. Well, you don't supposed to do that. Amen. And by the mere fact of them telling you that, that means they watching you. That's it. Because they say, well, if you name in the name of Jesus, if you name in the name of a Christian, or a child of God, whatever you want to call yourself, then they, they expect you to walk a certain way. And when you don't do it, they're the first one to say, I told you. I told you. <laughs> he ain't about nothing. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. He ain't about nothing. He ain't nothing. But when you can walk, and when people can see Jesus in you, you can cause them to know the Lord. Amen. We were talking about a brother in here, encouraged another brother. And he don't even know what he did. Right in this church. That's it. He don't know the influence he got on this other brother. Mm -hmm. Until the other brother said, if he can do it, I can do it. Amen. And the other brother using him as an, as an example. Amen. Amen. Now what if that brother would have been doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And that boy would want to pattern himself after him. But by the mere fact that they used to club together and they Used to do their thing together. Yeah. And you see how the Lord turned him around. Uh -huh. It make him feel there's hope for me too. Yeah. Right here in this church. Yeah. And I thought that was just wonderful. Yeah. To hear something like that. Yes. Because you always hear negative influence. Yeah. But it's very seldom that you hear a positive influence. Amen. Say, brother, you do it, I can do it too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I want to take this time to thank all y'all for coming out on Wednesday night. Give yourselves a hand. Hope y'all enjoy.